What's up everybody, All Graphics in here. In this fast video tutorial, we're gonna learn how to add shadows to cutouts. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and check our Instagram profile. We're doing an architecture giveaway. All right, so the first thing you usually do is go after the, the cutouts. You can go straight for Google Images and, and, search, and search there, but I recommend to you this website called Mr. Cutout. You can go there and find a lot of cutout people with the high quality. And then after you have it, you just import your render scene. I'm gonna use a blank canvas here just for the video purpose. But keep in mind that there's no right way to do this and this is not the only method. It's just the one that I use and I'm gonna share with you. And for the video purpose, we're gonna assume that the sun is coming from this direction. And we so we're gonna do a shadow like that. And I know that the shadow really depends on your render settings or your scene settings, but once you understand the basics, you will be able to do any shadows. Alright, so the first thing you're gonna do is hit B for brushes or click on this little icon right here. And you're gonna hit the red button, this window will pop up and you're gonna choose a soft brush. This one's gonna work. After that, you're gonna change the shape of the brush to something flat that will look right on the perspective. Something like that will work. Uh, the pho Photoshop CC has this tool right here, but if you're using some older version, it's gonna be located on Window, Brush. Then you're gonna be able to change the brush shape under this part of the window that we just opened. After that, you're gonna create a new layer. You're gonna grab a black color and you're gonna change the opacity to something like 30%. Usually how the shadow works is you have like a, a long shadow that the, the body is projecting on the ground, but you also have a touch shadow that is created from two surfaces that are very close or touching. In this case, the shoe is touching the ground, so it's gonna create a darker shadow. We're gonna use two separate layers to do that. The first one is going to be the long shadow with a slightly lower opacity and intensity. Oh, just one thing. Remember to always put the shadow underneath the people cut out. But don't be afraid to overpaint your shadows. The goal here is to build up a shadow intensity and then you can go come back to after and with the eraser and slowly fade away to you reach your res uh, desired result. Uh, also, don't forget to use the Alt with the right button to, to quickly resize your brush. Make sure you zoom in to paint a slightly darker shadow near the feet of the person. Once you're done with a long shadow, you can go ahead and create a new layer and use a brush with something like 70% and just fill in the touch shadow that I mentioned before. It's gonna be darker and it's gonna be very close to the feet of the cutout. And you're done with your shadow. One thing you gotta know is your render, your scene, is gonna set your uh, shadow length, it's, if it's gonna be soft or hard, and the direction. But you have to make sure you're, you're placing a, a correct cutout to your specific scene. For example, the shadow of the person has to match the shadow, the, the highlights and the shadow of the actual scene, alright? In this case, it's not really correct with the shadows and highlights of the cutout, but it's just for the video purpose. I'm just gonna rename the layers so that you guys know what are the orders, but please keep in mind that I just made these names up, but the names really don't matter. You just go for two types of shadow and create two types of layer to achieve that effect. Now we're gonna go for a different type of shadow. Let's imagine it's a overcast sky with with no direction of the sun, maybe like midday or something. So we can go ahead and get the same brush with the same distorted shape and create more like a, a overall shadow around the, the cutout. Again, make sure you're not using a 100% opacity brush. Go for 30, 40, something like that and build up your intensity uh, slowly. And then don't forget to go with the razor and soften that up. Just to make sure you guys got it, I'm gonna add shadows to a third one. It's gonna be this guy with motion blur, but it's the same technique and the same process. I'm doing this very fast and not very precise, just to get the overall shape. But 
once you're in your proper perspective doing the real job, make sure to spend some more time in it and put some more effort. And then we're gonna do the last example with how to make a heart shadow. You're gonna start with your cutout and then hit Ctrl J to duplicate the layer. Then hit Ctrl U to open the hue and saturation adjustments and bring the lightness to minus 100 or like 100% black. Hit OK and then bring that layer underneath the main one. And with the black one selected, hit Ctrl T, right click it on the, on the transform box, distort it and then put that flat on the ground. Make sure you follow the sun direction and then you can hit just enter or on the little check up there. And then we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just bring that up a little bit, hit OK, lower the opacity of the shadow layer and now we're gonna do the touch shadow, just create a new layer and using the same technique go ahead and fill that in. You can also intensify the shadow the closer it gets to the cutout. And we're finished with people cut out. Now we're gonna go for the vegetation. I'm gonna use a tree as an example, and we're gonna use the same technique that we used previously. We're gonna add hard shadows to it. But as you can see, this layer has the little icon there, which means it's a more object. We have to rasterize it first before we can add an effect. After that, you can hit Ctrl U, make it black. You can also find the hue and saturation under image adjustments then hit ctrl t distort it and put that flat on the ground we're going to use a different sun direction for this one hit ok bring that layer underneath the main one and lower the opacity we're going to also emphasize the shadow next to the trunk and then after that you can go to the, the to the main shadow and apply gaussian blur as well and there you have it, a vegetation shadow or people shadow. So this is it for the tutorial. I know it's very basic, but I hope you learned something from it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this type of tutorials, if I should do more of, of basic and more fast stuff, or I should keep with the usual weekly updates. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do it. Leave the like if you enjoyed, follow us on Instagram, and as always, see you next time. Bye!